all of us know our God, our Lord, our Father has done everything for us. And it was done on the cross. It was totally finished. And so before Jesus could come inside mother's womb, mother uh, Mary's womb, uh, the prophet spoke about him in Isaiah. What did he speak in Isaiah? That's what uh, it was so much striking to me today. Because I warn you, each and every one of you, to carry what Jesus has dispatched from the cross. He had already given to each and every person. No one of you is empty. You got it? All of you have every spiritual things that Jesus has done on the cross. All of you. Some of you realize it and then go for it. Many of us do not know it and we just keep quiet. This, the, the, the scripture in 61, uh, Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. So all of you know this scripture because this is the word given to this church. Okay, this is the word God gave to the leadership. Luke 4.18. So the Luke 4.18 is the promise and the prophecy about Lord Jesus Christ spoken by the prophet Isaiah in chapter 61. The first word that says, all of you please listen and receive it, it's for you. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on, repeat this now. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. You know, he has anointed me to preach the good news. He has anointed me. So if you have become a son of God, you see, who are we today? We are sons of God. So if you have become a son of God, you are a younger sister or a brother to Jesus Christ. So no demon in hell can stand in equal to you because Jesus is your uh, relative. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's how I can put it as easy as it can be. Okay, because the Lord has anointed me, because he has qualified me to preach the gospel, the good tidings. Carry the good tidings always with you. Even today, enter into the good tidings, yeah? The goodness of God, the word of God, the good news of the, of the Lord. To the meek, to poor, the afflicted, he has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted. So each and every person who is uh, blood bought and uh, who is related to Christ Jesus, they are here to heal the broken hearted. So even if you are broken hearted, you don't have to continue to be a broken hearted because Christ has already healed the broken hearted. Amen. Amen. And as you come in and sit here and somebody touches you on the shoulder, your broken heartedness is healed. Amen. Even now I pronounce over you, your broken heartedness is healed. Amen. 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 And you are not, you know, going back home the same way you came in. To proclaim liberty physically and spiritually. You know, he releases every captives and the opening of the prison. Listen to that carefully. You don't have to be in any prison physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Jesus Christ came not to be, uh, just to be in the form of a, you know, a, a, a crucified Savior on the cross, not to be on a picture, but he became so real and true, he came to do all these things in this world. And so he did and finished and he released the work upon us saying, I'm sending you a comforter. The, 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 when I was sitting down and, you know, just getting into the things of the Lord and, you know, very early morning I got up and then I'm just into it, into it, into it. You know, God is telling, I do not know who you are here. God is telling that he is your comforter. Amen. Who is that person anyways? He kept telling, he's your comforter. 
he is your comforter he is your comforter and so you know i have to take it down so he is he is your comforter today god is speaking to somebody here he is your comforter you find that in isaiah 66 verse 13 it says as one whom his mother comforts so will i comfort you you shall be comforted in jerusalem you shall be comf- comforted in jerusalem that means in the inside the peace of god amen. amen you shall be comforted in him so god is releasing comfort you receive comfort today in jesus name amen. because the moment the 40th chapter of isaiah starts it starts with a different different uh, a note altogether comparing to the first 39 chapters 40th chapter starts with comfort ye my people so the, there starts all the grace you know from f- chapter 40 before 40 it's a so whole, whole different story and in 40th chapter it starts and starts to speak about the messenger who came before Jesus Christ that was John the Baptist who came to prepare the way of the Lord the 40th chapter speaks about the ends with those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength Amen. come on i am speaking over you prophetically those who wait upon the lord shall renew their sin they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint so what god is putting upon you is you know god's comfort is coming on you even though it's getting delayed you think that it's late but then god is telling no i'm with you that's what this morning he was telling a hey, just take away your uh, eyes from all that is that's going around you take away your eyes and your focus from everything that is around you and then do not waste time thinking about others that means what thinking about others that means what they will think of me will they love me do they accept me and then um you won't know what i'm telling i'm telling because this is what i'm i'm talking to god so uh, 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 when i say it will help you um uh, what are, what others are thinking oh i did this my goodness they must be thinking this they must be thinking that they must be thinking oh again that thing will come oh i made them to think like that about me oh they must be thinking i said god free me from me you got it what i'm telling i know it's prophetic free me from me i'm very early awakened even though i went to bed late to our time to our family time i went to bed late because we had meeting yesterday and so i I'm, i'm early i'm awake and i'm lying down in the bed but then i'm just connecting just connecting with god so all these things are passing in my mind and so what god is telling us today lord I need a freedom to be so freely liberated into you that means God keep me away from me stop me from thinking I said stop me from how many of you are with me you know you get so uh, what to say uh, 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 you know entangled with things that you keep thinking what will they think what will they think what will they think what i am what is this what is that what is all the time oh we you may, nobody is thinking about you but then your mind is selling oh, 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 oh so you know what waste of time you go sleep with a thought and you wake up with a thought because you are over yourself like you know you are too much of yourself so god is telling stop all that So then I said God stop me from thinking <laughs> in Jesus name stop me from thinking I don't want to think got it so what happens you become so free to focus on God so God is calling us that you are a very valuable person and you have you are carrying a comforting balm of Gilead in you and you are not broken hearted you are perfectly okay and so you are somebody in the kingdom Amen. and you live there Amen. and so be filled with joy for you Amen. as a single person you be you know joy filled for you stop all that entanglement 
Jesus went to the cross and did all that we are going to participate in it. And we, week after week, we entangle ourselves with everything all around us. What God is telling, he is giving you, it's all granted. Consolation, joy, come on, everybody receive. Consolation, joy is given to you. People, come on, go embrace it. Take it, it's yours. Comfort is given to you. Joy is given to you. Why you waste time? Why you waste your energy for something which is not going to be lasting long? And so joy instead of mourning, garment of praise instead of heaviness. So the communion speaks about that. You are free. Amen. You are free. You are free. So I can go on and on and on, say everything what God has got here. So double honor. Say double honor. You know, you, you are giving, given honor in the place of shame. If anybody is you know, struggling with that type of a background, or something that you're going through, you know, about something, something in your life, in that place of shame, God is giving you double honor. Amen. Take it. God, in answer your prayer, you're quite sick. You have all this going on in your life. Oh, you're sick all the Nah, that's not from God. You are okay. You, your, your sick is not uh, uh, your, uh, your uh, like problem. Sick, everybody gets sick. Come on. Wake up and be happy. Amen. Amen. And so you are not cursed or whatever. You are blessed. And God is calling you to remain in the blessing because we are going to participate in the communion. And that is what it speaks. Freedom, liberty, joy, happiness, strength, comfort. You know, all that you need is here. And so come and participate in it and accept who you are in Christ. You are okay. And another point that I wanted to say is, how many of you are struggling saying that I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm here sinner, there sinner, everywhere sinner, sinner. You know, God wants you to know this. This sinner conscience and all the time sinner conscience is bugging God. It's not making God feel so sorry for you. Sinner conscience is killing your real thing. Not that I'm encouraging you to go fall into sin, but what I'm trying to tell you is the only remedy to feel free from any type of clutches, bondage, sin. Listen to this. Get into the presence of the Lord. This is what God told me. You get into the presence of the Lord, that's enough. Inside the presence of the Lord, you know, sin and the presence of the Lord can't stay together. Get into the presence of the Lord. All the time, take a step into the presence of the Lord. All of you youngsters, let me tell you, if you have more of Jesus in you, you will, you will be blessed. Amen. That's it. Go to God. That's it. Don't live, I'm bad. I'm here bad. I'm there bad. Get into God. Everything will be okay. Amen.